G'day folks, Michael from Doom and Darkness bringing you another video. So I must apologize for my absence of late. There's been a lot of stuff going on. I've been very, very busy and there are some things that I need to make videos about. Um, so I'm trying to address all of these issues in the one video. This once again is just going to be a sit and talk. So it's a painting video. Make sure you've got something to work on. I'm just going to be uh, blathering away in the background. There's not really any visual content, so please paint on. Uh, this one's called Community Core and Catastrophe because these are the three things that are going, I'm going to be talking about. So uh, let's crack on. Firstly, community. So this is the uh, topic of the week that was put forward last week, I think, by Mr. Vince Ventrilli himself. And this was on the news that GW is making a return to the community and the organized events and is going to do an active push to create and support community and it's going to do this by interv uh, by introducing a uh, some sort of community or tournament point system um, and have uh, rewards you know associated with it and a clear structure to those rewards or points or, or whatever it is um, I don't really care too much, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't really have much time for when I think these are going to be run. Um, I don't think I'll be able to participate in them much at all. Um, so for me personally, from that point of view, like from a personal interest, uh, I don't really care. But I want to say that it's a good thing, I think. I think it's good that GW is coming back. They're opening up the lines of communication and they're trying to um, return and, and maybe add structure to, well, a certain GW structure to these sorts of events. Now, I'm, I don't know um, the extent of this, and I haven't even bothered to go read up, at, uh, up, up on it at all. So I, I, I'm not sure whether or not this is just GW saying, hey, you guys are running an event. It's any event at all. How about you use this, 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 and we'll provide that, right? So I don't know if that's just the structure. You guys are running whatever you want with Age of Sigma, with whatever rules format you want, and whatever scale and whatever else, here's something to help you do it. I don't know if they're going to do that. Or if they're going to say to people, or when people apply to them, they're going to say, hey, thanks for getting in contact with us. If you run and want to run an event in this style of format that has these key GW things in it, then we would be happy to provide you with, you know, the point system, the, um, what do they call it? You know, the rewards, the, the prize support, all that sort of stuff. So I don't know which one of those is going to be. Um, and I think it's important which one, because one is very much them just going back to the community and saying, hey, let's just give free shit out and help try and encourage people to, to come to the events and maybe help some of you out there who don't know how to run an event um, or structure an event, put in place some sort of um, GW supported structure. That's a positive thing. Um, it, when GW starts turning around, they say, hey guys, you can get this prize support and use this structure that we've designed and we'll make all these things easy for you if you run an event that ticks event that ticks all these boxes, tick, 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 then, uh, th then that's really quite different and they're very much, sh very actively shaping the community. They're still supporting it, of course, but they're very actively shaping it as well. Um, and I feel like there is room for some conflict there because you do have a lot of community comps out, out there at the moment. The community itself really took control of the tournament scene with GW's absence and um, if GW comes back and says hey we want to offer this support most people are going to be very happy to receive that support but the conditions are this this and this then um, there are a lot of people that are going to say sure no problems we can run with that and everyone can be happy and then there are going to be some people who are going to say no this is ridiculous I don't want to do that I don't want your support and then it's going to become in a way not um overtly but just sort of behind the scenes there's going to be a little bit of a push and shove between GW supported events and non-GW supported events and I have to say that depending on the level of prize support and whatever else I think the GW supports events might might just win um, and you know then it's going to be in a way a lot of people well maybe half the people are going to be saying well GW has crushed the community. <laughs> By GW coming back into the community, they've killed half of what the old community that what was there. And that may very well happen. Um, it, 
but I, I'm supportive of it and I kind of want it to happen, to be honest with you. Something I don't have up here, but um, I am sick of fucking pushing fucking events, of trying to push games, of trying to... I'm sick of, of, of doing that shit. I fucking hate it. And I know this is not... GW is just going to step in and send down a rep and the rep's going to organise all these events. Well, they will at their own store, I guess, I'm sure. At the GW stores, but... Um, if this makes it easier for other people to step up and host events or try to get people involved in the hobby and build community, then um, then I'm all for it. Because to be honest with you, I'm fucking sick of it. I'm just fed up at the moment. And um, uh, not for any particular negative reason, um, you know, to do with anyone or anything, that, or anything that's going on in my community. I'm just tired. I'm just getting really fucking tired. And, um, and I just can't keep it up. And uh, the only reward that community organisers at the moment get for trying to, you know, cultivate community is the community itself. And the fact that you've always got a current player base and you're a strong player base and you can always get games and that sort of thing. It's like, you know, you're fueling your own hobby because you want to have multiple opponents to play against. You want to have a fun hobby community. And so you are involved in creating that actively and the reward is the community that you get itself. But um, but I hope, you know, GW coming back helps more people, um, you know, get involved in that community building or easier for them. Um, I've sort of touched on a lot of people won't like the format. People are going to hate it. They're going to say, this is too simple. This is this. This doesn't have any, this doesn't have points for AOS. I don't care what you sort of point system or hierarchy you introduce the game is fucking broken, it's stupid, you know, whatever, um, people will do that, and for 40k as well, um, wow, like, I, I'm really interested to see what they do here, because 40k is something that has to have a community comp or a comp, it's so heavy, because the game is so open to exploitation, and, and, um, uh, you, you really do need, you know, it's just not balanced, at, there's just, there's not even a hope of fucking balancing that shit. That is a shit fight, 40k. Um, and so they really need those comp systems, the community comp, the South Coast GT comp, the fucking intercontinental fucking panel for climate change or whatever else. They need these things in order to bring them back to a, a, a happy level for tournament goers. Um, and if GEW comes in and says, hey, how about you get rid of the comp, but you play with this system? You know, it's just going to be interesting to see what happens anyway. And the thing is, though, as well, is I'm pretty sure that GW will come back into the community and they will lead, okay? They won't react. So I don't expect them to come back and start saying, oh, hey, guys, we're back in the communication world. Um, what do you want us to do to make this hobby or this community better? They may ask that question, but I don't think they really want the answer. They'll pick their answers out of it. Um, and so if people come back and say, you know, oh, we want points in Age of Sigma, an overwhelming people amount say that, they're not going to put points in Age of Sigma. If people were to say through this community interaction, oh, we want a completely balanced game and we want you to remove uh, a lot of the flavor and individual individuality out of the armies, from 40k in fantasy and in favor of a more balanced competitive game that we can play easier for tournaments I, I i severely doubt that they will do that as a part of community interaction but what they will do is say things like um oh you know hey guys what is the feedback like what do you like what would you like to see from our painting videos right how would you like to see us use our paints to better effect? Um, what sort of faction would you like to see the most? You know, all these things that are very sales orientated and very much about their product and very much or, or very much GW releases a product, right? And pushes the product out and then says, how could we make you buy more of our product? Right, so if the, you know, and, and I think that's a positive thing. I think GW really needs to still be a driver, not a reactor. I think it really needs to push forward with what it does, which is make great models and make, I guess I have to say, average games. 
um, or good games, no, make good games and great models. GW needs to push forward doing that and the community needs to follow it and needs to be built around it as opposed to GW just turning itself inside out and saying, oh, what do you all want? Because, you know, you're going to have 20 vocal minorities all wanting different things and GW is going to go, this is, you know, one, you're going to do one thing and, and 50 vocal minorities are going to scream bloody murder and they're going to say, this is ridiculous. It turns out that these guys that like to collect plastic toys and push them around the table have a high percentage of fucking idiots amongst them. Who would have known? Um, and they'll withdraw. So I guess in summary, I think that the GW uh, community engagement is good. Their price support, all that sort of good. I want them to come back in, but I want them to maintain a driver. I don't want them to become reactive. Um, because look, to be honest with you, I'm probably happier when GW brings something out and I say, yeah, I think that's stupid. As opposed to like the shit that I hear my mates and people I know say, they say, oh, I'd love to see this. And I think to myself, that's a fucking stupid idea. If GW brought that out, that would be the worst thing ever. You know what I mean? But oh, I don't know. It's just me anyways. So let's have a look at the next topic. Um, core. Okay. So Anthony from the Sustainable Center um, brought out his video about core. And um, it was like last time I looked at it, it was like 38 like, uh, dislikes, thumbs down to like 28 thumbs uh, thumbs up or something. And I thought that was amazing. Um, people were going off in the comments. They were losing their fucking minds. And I have to call Joe Mo out because Joe Mo's brain fucking melted. Um, I don't know if you, you, like, I don't know if anything's happened, if he got banned or if his comments are still there or whatever else. It'd be fun to see. But if you haven't seen them, go back to, to Anthony's video and have a look at Joe Mo. Like, just scroll through the comments and, like, Joe Mo's commenting and you can see, like, the fucking steam's coming out of his ears and he's just like fucking pure rage and he's smashing the fucking keyboard with his forehead and then other people are commenting on it like saying whatever they think and Joe Mo's just jumping on their fucking thread too and like Rah! <laughs> and it was I was laughing my ass off Joe so um no good form uh, but if you do it on my channel, I'll fucking block you, but, um, do it on Anthony's all you like, because that was good fun to read. But, um, yeah, so people really lost their minds a bit. Oh, well, they didn't lose their minds. A lot of people were very constructive and it was a good chat overall. I found that the video highly entertaining and I thought to myself, holy shit, I have to make a video about this because 38 thumbs down to 28 thumbs up is just too good a thing for me to you know it's just a bandwagon that's waiting for doom to jump onto it um so i went out and i recorded about an hour and a half video talking about it and um the sound fucked up on the whole thing not a single thing recorded and um i was just like oh, fuck this shit i'm not <laughs> i'm not re-recording that are you, are, you, are you freaking kidding me <laughs> um i couldn't help myself man but yeah so you know i'm, I'm sort of readdressing this and let's try and do it quickly so, in summary, <laughs> a summary already, I haven't even gone through the start. So, let's start off. Uh, basically, reading through those comments, most people had three main points. I think there's probably four, but I've forgotten it. Um, firstly, is that the core troops, the core requirement, um, really helps to establish the rank and file of the game and give the overall theme of a mass-ranked fantasy battles army, right? Because normally your core is, well, maybe not so good. And it often is, you know, bulk troops. It's like Orc Boys, it's Halberdiers, it's um, Skeletons, it's all this sort of shit. And, and your core is often the reason, like, responsible for the, um, you know, some of the big blocks and the big rank and file units that you have on the board. And I agree with that. And I certainly think that that does uh, really help to establish... Um, you know, that sort of rank and file theme and the mass fantasy battle theme and feel of 8th edition. I certainly agree with that point. Other people said that it gives the armies the flavor of the army, the unique flavor to the army, and that it was, oh, I can't remember what Vince called them, the everyman or some shit, but the, the, the rank and file, the core trooper, is one of the main identifiers of the unit. 
and um, this one gets thrown around a lot, but why not? But it's it's the Tomb King chariots, which are so iconic to Tomb Kings that when you see them and by having them on the table and in core, it's so unique to Tomb Kings that it, it really um, helps to give them their own uh, flavor of undead, right? Or maybe it's the halberdiers with their bright fucking pantaloons and whatever else. You know, that really sets that sort of... Um, uh, that period and that feel of the type of, of army of the empire, um, the raggedness and the size of the orcs or whatever it is. But whatever the core troop is, it really helps to define the identity of um, of that army. And I agree with that as well. I think that is also true and that does happen. Um, core restriction, the, the 25% as well, ensures that you have... Uh, different tiers of strength units so that every single time you're you're putting your, your, your models down and your opponent is as well uh, on average you know you're going to have a tiered structure so you're going to have your weaker troops for your core your stronger for your special and then maybe your really strong but you know more elite and lower model count um, for your rare and that structure to the game and that tiered system of, of army building is one of the most important dynamics of, of 8th edition or 9th age and it really helps to add a layer of strategy into the game. I also agree with that. So from reading the comments or whatever else, were the three sort of main points that I thought people were saying and um, of why they like core in the game. And I think for the most part, uh, I agree with all those points, but but I don't think that you need to have three units or say 120 skeletons or whatever else on the table to get the feel of the rank and file. I certainly agree that it really rams at home with a fucking hammer, but if you take a step back from that and you just have uh, units of 20 guys, you know units of 10 guys, whatever, just, but you have small units, MSU units, you still feel like it's rank and file. And I think the main thing that adds the rank and file feel is firstly, it doesn't matter if you're 10 guys or you're 20 guys, but when you've got them all ranked up like that, especially on squares and on a movement tray, it gives that overall opinion. Even when you're looking at um, ogres, for example, you can have, you know, I want to say MSU Ogres, but you can have 12 Ogres on the table and they feel like they're rank and file still. You know, you can have, uh, it's and it's like one unit of Ogres, of 12 Ogres, your gut star, and you feel like you're rank and file still. Um, if you look at 10 Chaos Knights or even 5 Chaos Knights together, very elite unit, they still feel like rank and file. Um and so while I do agree that having those big blocks of core add to the flavor of, of rank and file and add to it overall, I don't think it's essential, right? I think if you were to remove that 25% core tax, you would still have the feel of rank and file, right? Um, I'm so worried right now because the little red light on my computer is just churning over. I know what the fuck it's doing, but it's thinking its head off. And my computer's old, so every time it starts to think and I'm talking or doing something at the same time, odds are it's not recording. And uh, if that happens for the third video in a row, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna cry. Um, so the the other, the next argument that it gives the army the flavor, well, yes, it certainly does. Um, but there's nothing that gives. You, you know, you can say, well, the Tomb Kings are, uh, the, 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 the Tomb King chariots are so iconic to them, that's what gives the army the flavor and this sort of stuff. Well, I would argue that the Toughness 8 Necrosphinx and War Kitty and um, Casket of Souls, you know, there, there's nothing more iconic than those sorts of units and that they give the army as much, as much flavor and you are, as are important, unique identifiers to that army as the core troops are. And in fact, if you had any army in the game and you remove the core troops from it, you would still see, you would still know exactly what army it is. You would still get that unique flavor of that army as well. Because um, 
like think about chaos, think about the high elves, think about, you know, white lines, think about all that stuff. It all maintains the flavor across the special, across the rare, across everywhere. It still has the, the flavor of the overall army. So just because you remove the Lotharan Sea Guard doesn't make the army less elfy because now you've only got sword masters and white lions. If you remove the skeleton chariots from the tomb kings and let's just say replace them with tomb guard, right? You you take away fucking a whole bunch of chariots and shit and replace it with a block of 40 tomb guard. That looks fucking pretty pretty undying dynasties, pretty tomb kings to me still. And you got the rank and file there as well. Um so I do agree that the core troops do certainly give that unique flavor to the army, but they're not essential for it. I think you have that there regardless of, of the um, the core or not. Um, so I'm not sure, again, that while it is a valid point, like it's not essential, it's not 100% of a deal breaker. Um, and then when it comes into giving the, the armies tiers of unit choices, and that adds to the strategy, um, again, I, I certainly think it does, but it's certainly not essential to the game. And I think that, uh, so every all the different units in the game already have this because they have different builds. So if you have a fast cav unit in your special choices, let's say we did remove core completely and we had a fast cav unit in our special, we had... Um, our heavy hitters in special, we had a giant unkillable unit that was just a fucking a tar pit. It doesn't have to be 40 or 60 un uh, models to be that tar pit. It could be five toughness, five guys with a two up armor save that can't do much damage. And, and only, you know what I mean? Like it could be a low model count, just tough as nails unit. Blight Kings are an example of this. Blight Kings, well, they kill everything as well, but Blight Kings were weapon skill 6. You were minus 1 to hit them. This is an 8th edition um, with a 3-up armor save or something, and then you gave them regeneration on top of that, and they were toughness 5. So you're going into a toughness 5 unit that you were hitting on 5s that then had a 3-up armor save and a 5-up regen or something, um, and then you put miasma or pestilence or something like that on them and they, they, you had to hit them on sixes or something. It was just fucking, they, they would smash everything. And um, But I could take six of them, I could take five of them and I could park them in front of skull crushers and just say, come at me, bro. Because not only will I bog you down here, but I'll smash you as well. But, but the thing is, is that the damage that they received was so minor. It was so minor. And they were a tar pit no, I don't want to just call them a cart tar pit because obviously we all know you give them great weapons and they just cleave everything as well. But they they were such an effective tar pit in, you know, a special section or, or you know, rare section or whatever. I think that was special. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that, uh, but then of course that tar pit would just be run around by fast cav and doomfire warlocks and that sort of shit so even though you don't have you may not have a restriction to have 25 percent core you still get those tiered um army uh like unit strengths just because of their natural roles and their different abilities and i think even if you were just simply to go and remove the core from the game right now okay let me let me phrase this differently especially in context of the point that i'm talking about Imagine if you didn't remove core, but you removed special, and your core choice was now 50% of your army, and it included everything that was in your special unit section as well. Right? Think about that, how the game would be then. And then think about how the game would be, is if we removed the 25% core requirement, and took all the units that were in core, in core maybe buff some of them a little bit, change their roles and put them all into special. So you had 50% special, but different units, right? Just sort of think about how that would work. Um, because you would still have your, your different tiers of strength, right? You still have your different unit types. You still have your cavalry, your monstrous cavalry, your infantry, your monstrous infantry, your fast cav, your chariots, all those things, regardless of core or special or wherever they are, 
they all have unique strengths and unique weaknesses as well. And sometimes for some armies like Chaos, with their core chariots, they transcend the fucking boundary of core and special. Chaos Warriors used to transcend the boundary of, of core and special. But it wasn't so much that how strong they were or the fact that they were on core that really mattered. It was their strengths and weaknesses that was the most important when you played against them. So I'm starting to digress a little bit. But um, essentially, if you, if you understand what I'm saying, I'm saying that each unit has a role and that role is unique. And regardless of where it sits, that creates the dynamic that adds to the strategy, not the, the, the minimum you know, core restriction. So while I think all of those arguments for core are good and they, are, they do work uh, for those reasons, I don't think they're essential. And so what's the solution? Well, I don't know. And um, uh, I don't really care. I'm happy with the core, select, the core choice at the moment. I'll just fucking play it with a core. I, I don't really give two rats. Uh, it's not a deal breaker for me. Um, but I would like it without the core. In, it, I, I really would like to take that away. Um, if you took away a core requirement, you made my, my skill. I'd probably still take Tomb King Chariots anyway. Um, because I like them with the free reform and so forth. Their threat range is so awesome. You know, they're, they're movement eight now and with a free reform, they can work as chaff, especially because you're undead. And like, uh, it, it just, um, you would still find uses. So I just think give the units that are currently core some changes, make them usable, make them have roles and you're not forced to take them, but you can take them if you want and it's a viable option. Um, will it be a shitty game if no one took those core troops and everyone just took Chaos Knights. Well, there are worse armies than Chaos Knights I can think of. You know, if you had, if you spend all your core section on on just Chaos Knights or whatever. Um, I'm thinking of when the end times happened and people lost their minds and they were like, oh, this is just shit, like 50% lords and heroes. People are going to take uh, three Nurgle Demon Princes. And that's just broken, and that's ridiculous, and they really got upset. And I played the end times religiously since it started until it ended. And I often had four games of Warhammer a week, because I had two days off from uni in the middle of the week, and I was able to go down the, the store for those two games and play. So I was often playing two games a day back to back. I played a lot of Warhammer games. And I never came up against three <laughs> Nurgle Demon Princes. Um, you know, and, and I think that's something that we should all do. And they said that when the Archaean book came out. And they went completely unbound. And they said, you know what, guys? I really think you should just try this. I th really think you should make your army using the Archaean rules. And just give it a shot. Play it. And see what you think. And I challenge everyone now. With your mate. Don't do it with an idiot. Right. If you've got a mate or a small gaming group that you play Warhammer against, go out there and play unbound, uncomped Warhammer. Do it with Ninth Age. Do it with Ninth Age. That's probably a better choice than Eighth Edition. But do it with Ninth Ninth Age and don't proxy anything. Okay, that that should be the number one rule. Don't proxy anything. Make an unbound army. Your get your opponent to make an unbound army. And then play using the Ninth Age rules. And I bet you you have fucking a ton of fun. I bet you go, yep, this was a sweet game. Um, so I'm not advocating that as a, a system moving forward. But I'm just saying that in my opinion, that 25% restriction for core is not essential. Um, I don't think it, it is essential for all of those things that we spoke about. I think that we can remove the 25% core restriction and easily have and actually have a better game we can have a better game because people have more flexibility to to bring what they want yeah you know, i just i that's just what i i truly sort of think um but i do think it's important to still have that structure and a structure and i know that other other you know structures in the past where it says you know uh minimum two core units and people take two fucking dogs and and that's it well, some some armies can use that better than others, 
but I actually just like the idea of taking special away and making it core, combining it with core and having a 50% core or taking away core and putting those units in special, you know, or renaming it completely. 50% of your units must come from, you know, your troops choice. And then you have your rare choices, your heroes and lords or something like that. That'd be cool. You can give you can give each of the those underpowered stupid weak units some unique buffs and um, make them all have a certain use. So anyway, I've I've spoken too much about this now, and I'll move on to the next thing. But um, yeah, all good. If I get 38 thumbs down, 28 thumbs up because I agree with Anthony, uh, I'll be happy with that, folks. So catastrophe. Um, the first thing, the last two videos that I've made have failed to record. They haven't recorded at all. Uh, one of them, like the one on core, it went for like an hour and a half. It was fantastic fucking painting material. And then when I clicked it to check it, it the sound just went like this. I was like, are you kidding me? Press play again. And it was just fucking nothing. And um, so, yeah, there were tears that night. Well, there weren't tears, but anyways. Um, so that's why you probably haven't heard from me for a while. Uh, the next thing is my mother died, um, and that happened on Thursday, and uh, obviously that's a, a sad thing, but uh, one of the inevitabilities of life, I guess. Um, so that sort of, you know, had a, a big impact. Um, there are going to be some changes to the channel uh, coming up, and, and I'll talk about them now, but there's going to be less videos coming out of the channel. Um, and this is mainly because I'm going to be spending much more time away. So next week I'm leaving, be gone for two weeks. I'll come back and I'll, I won't be here long at all and I'll be away on another drilling program. I'll come back, I'll be here for a week or so and then I'll be away for, you know, sort of starting the exploration season. So um, I won't be here much and so I won't be making that many videos um, because I won't have that much time to play like obviously I'll be trying to get a game in where possible but in the time when I am back home um, it's going to be really important to spend that time with my family especially my wife's sick and you know my son is only three and he thinks I'm the coolest dude in the world and it's really going to be difficult for him and myself for me to go away so uh, when I am here I'm really going to have to um, you know, sit down, it's easier for me to sit down and make a topical video at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night than it is for me to find the time with another person and go out and have a three-hour game and then come back and make the battle report and that sort of stuff. So I'm certainly going to be trying to play because I do love it, but um, there will be, the, the channel will go much heavier on the topical videos as opposed to the bat reps because just time restrictions and, and that sort of stuff. Um... The Ninth Age, so I'm finding the Ninth Age very difficult to sustain at the moment. Um, Gobicon had, there's like five people I know that were going in Gobicon, only three had registered. At the time I had to spend, it was meant to be this weekend, but obviously my mother's funeral is, so um, we couldn't do that, but... Um, yeah, it's been a hard sell, and uh, and I can't fucking keep it up. I reckon I'm the only person out there at the moment in or in my community in Adelaide. You're saying to people, "Hi, do you want to play Ninth Age? Do you want to play Ninth Age? Hey, mate, how about a game of Ninth Age?" You know, I could message ten people and say, "Hi, how about a game of Ninth Age?" And one or two might say yes, and of those one or two, you know, you then have to organise the right time with. And then of those um, one or two, I think maybe, you know, half of those are just doing it because I've asked them as opposed to they really want to play Ninth Age, if that makes sense. Like, I don't think I've had maybe of all the bat reps I've made, I think maybe one of those has been someone contacting me, sending me a message say, hey man, how about a game of Ninth Age? So it's it's tough constantly pushing it and constantly trying to sell it and constantly try to generate community engagement with it and uh, interest and then sell it and every time ask me, someone asks me what it is I have to explain it and and um, you know the, the, the local community here is so driven and dominated by the games workshop stores 
I'd say 50% of the hobby community is dependent on the Games Workshop stores. So whatever the Games Workshop store manager is playing or pushing in his store is what 50% of the community are playing. And at the moment that's Lord of the Rings and 40k and a little bit of Age of Sigma. So there's like ninth age people are like what people have buried their fucking um their models and you know aren't really coming out to uh to play that as much so um and like i said before i'm, I'm getting tired like i i just i can't just keep pushing it anymore i just don't want to keep pushing it either i don't want to be that guy who's for the next it's been the last six months every time you know half these gamers hear from me it's hey let's play ninth age hey let's play ninth age uh, I, I don't want to be that guy, you know what I mean? So, fuck it, I'm not going to keep pushing it. If people want to play Ninth Age, you know, um, let me know. Contact me. I'm happy to play Ninth Age. I love playing Ninth Age. I'll play it any time, but, um, but I just can't push it anymore by myself. So, whatever that means, if that means that there will be less Ninth Age on the channel, then that's what it means. But, um... Uh, but you know, fuck, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Uh, I don't really see it being, um, picked up a lot. There are some players that have picked it up and whatever else, but even some of those half the time we're playing saying, well, I'm not sure why we're not just playing eighth edition. You know, we all liked eighth edition. They're just saying, well, maybe we should just play eighth edition instead, instead of all these new units and looking up these rules and this sort of stuff. So it's, um... It's probably not taking off as much here at the moment. I, I certainly hope that there is another community here in Adelaide that I'm unaware of that where Ninth Age is kicking ass. If you're a part of that community, please let me know because I'd love to join it. But um, for the players that I know and that sort of stuff that are in the hobby, uh, Ninth Age is just not a, not really top of the priorities. And it's just not sustainable uh, for me to, to keep banging on about it. So there will be that change. I'm still going to be interested in Ninth Age. I'm still going to be active in Ninth Age, and I'll st it's still be my preferred game when I when I can play. I I'll be happy to play. But if you know my opponents and that want to play a different game, and they're just playing Ninth Age to placate me, then I'd rather play the game that they want to play. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. So that's going to happen. Um, I want to do my masters. This is something else. So uh, I need to. Well, my my MBA is the easiest option for me to do, um, but my geology masters as well is 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 an option. Um, I just need to it takes a lot more fine tuning to to get that sorted. But uh, coming up in the near future, my masters is. I, I certainly want to start my masters or a masters, and. Um, as some of you know, that's going to take a lot of time, and that will mean less Warhammer and more study. So, you know, these are the sort of things that are going on in my life that uh, that will impact the channel, and this is why you'll see the, the channel change a bit. I think probably most importantly of all, though, and something that may have the biggest impact, is I've set my computer to update to Windows 10 tonight. <laughs> um... So I've had this pop up like coming up on my computer for fucking I reckon it's been six months or longer, saying free upgrade to Windows 10, free upgrade to Windows 10, upgrade to Windows 10, do Windows 10. Hey, would you like to try Windows 10? Click here to do Windows 10. Hey, how about we install Windows 10 on your computer? And I've got an old, um, I don't even know what I was going to say XP, but I, I don't even know what I'm fucking running at the moment. Um, I don't think I've ever updated my operating system. Yes, I have. I'm an idiot, but. You know, I didn't do Windows 9 or anything like that. And I, I just sort of figured that, because uh, I know Windows 10 is a, a new style, and um, it's pretty consistent with, you know, my iPad and all that sort of shit. And I'm thinking, you know what, this is, if this is the way forward, even if it is buggy or whatever, let's just get into it. Let's just learn how to use it. And I'm sure once I'm, I'm, I'm used to it as well, there'll be some really great features about it. So I'm upgrading to Windows 10. And, uh, but it would just make, may make everything turn to shit and ruin my computer and I'll never make a video again. Only time will tell. So that's it, folks. We've spoken about community. We've spoken about core and we've spoken about catastrophe. Uh, so in summary community, GW returning to the community, that is good. I hope they drive it. I don't, I hope they're not just 
reactive. Um, core in the, the ninth age, I certainly don't think it's essential. I think you could remove it and have a better game and still achieve all the three main things that core currently achieves at the moment. Catastrophe, um, my mother has died. Uh, I'm getting very busy with work. I want to pursue my study more as well. Um, I'm not getting as good a reaction to ninth age as I would like here. And I've been pushing it for six months straight and I need a fucking break. Um, I want to do my masters and I'm going to Windows 10 and uh, and you may never see me after Windows 10 updates. So that's it, folks. Um, thanks for listening. I hope you got something painted and I'm praying to God that this time the sound records. I'll uh, talk to you soon.